Hey everybody, I want to talk today about my formative years, the 1980s. More specifically, I want to talk about one of my favorite places to go in the 1980s, the video arcade. You see, back then, in order to play the really great games, we had to go to the arcade. Yeah, we had games at home, we had Atari, we had NES, but the games weren't quite as good as they were in the arcade. And this didn't change until the late 90s, the early 2000s, when the PlayStation and the Xbox started up in the bar when it came to home video games. But without further ado, I wanted to count down my top 10 favorite games of the 1980s. Keep in mind this is my personal list and it's going to differ from yours. To some of you it's going to be a history lesson, but to us older gamers it's going to be a walk down memory lane. So sit back and relax while I count down... Number 10, Double Dragon. This is the game that put the beat em up on the map, folks. This was the spiritual sequel to an earlier game called Renegade, but it improved the formula on so many levels. It was the first game to feature two player co op, and it was the first game that allowed you to pick up bats and knives dropped by the enemy. Double Dragon was huge in the mid to late 80s. This game inspired two sequels and a ton of imitators, not to mention a really shitty movie several years later. Some of these imitators improved the beat-em-up formula, but Double Dragon gets spot number 10 for its innovation. Number 9, Galaga. What can I say about Galaga that already hasn't been said? This was an instant classic the moment it hit the arcades. It was a sequel to the already popular Galaxian, and it was the first game to feature an upgradable ship. You see, your fighter could be captured by a tractor beam that would be led around by the Galaga who captured it. If and when you killed that Galaga with your ship, the two ships would then join to become a dual laser firing behemoth of DEATH! Oh, there were a lot of anguished cries around the arcade back then when people were accidentally shooting down their own ship. But I don't have to tell you all of this because you've probably played the game regardless of your age. This game has retained incredible popularity over the years and is still widely being played today. That man is playing Galaga. Thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. Number 8, Ghosts and Goblins. This was an epic game, and this was one that helped put Capcom on the map. The only reason it scores so low on this list is because people didn't play this one so much because of its intense fucking difficulty. Gamers were intimidated by this one and didn't drop a lot of quarters into it, but it exploded once it started being ported to home systems. Hell, this game is causing nerd rage in a whole new generation today. Arthur's quest to save his dearly beloved from the clutches of the Prince of Darkness had him traversing many different locales and fighting many different creatures with many different weapons. Oh, in 1989, they released a sequel, but we don't like to talk about that one. Be gone to even be gone back to hell. Number 7, Spy Hunter. By 1983, vertically scrolling racing games were a dime a dozen, but this one revolutionized the genre by having the player control a tricked out 007 style sports car complete with oil slicks, smoke screens, missiles and machine guns. It was every gamer's dream to be involved in a James Bond style car chase, and this game for the time helped us realize that dream, that is without causing loss of property and or life. And who could forget that Peter Gunn theme? Number 6, Jackal. Originally released in North America as Top Gunner, the name was changed back to Jackal for the NES release in 1988. Whatever name it went by, gamers were assured of a great time. This co-op title featured two jeeps a la Rat Patrol who were on a mission to rescue POWs and ultimately destroy the enemy's base. The real joy of the game came from rescuing certain POWs and powering up your weapons from this, to this, to this, to this, to this. The pure mayhem that you could cause alone or with a friend made this game worth playing. Number 5, Akari Warriors. This game was a vertically scrolling shooter that had the unique feature of a rotating joystick for aiming. It was also one of the first games that featured limited ammunition. 
Inspired by the Rambo character, one or two players had to fight their way out after their plane crashed behind enemy lines. There were upgradable weapons and hijackable vehicles. Machine guns and grenades could be powered up to make sure the player became a force to be reckoned with. The Kauri Warriors was one game that allowed for wanton destruction and celebrated the senseless violence that we all loved in the 80s. Number 4. Gunsmoke Capcom made many vertically scrolling shooters in the 80s, but this western themed game in my opinion was the best of the bunch. It boasted great graphics, great music, and memorable villains. Each stage would begin with a wanted poster of the villain who would be waiting for you at the end of the stage, after you fought your way through hordes of their henchmen. The game also had a unique control feature of three separate fire buttons. The center of button would make the hero fire straight ahead, while the left and right buttons would make him fire off to the sides. It has been said that this game was the inspiration for the extremely popular Red Dead series in the 2000s. Number 3. Exciting Hour This wasn't the first wrestling game, but it was the first one that was any good. Exciting Hour hit just as the popularity of professional wrestling was really starting to skyrocket in 1985. It really paved the way for the slew of wrestling games that would come in its wake. In fact, Exciting Hour influenced the entire way game developers would depict hand-to-hand -hand combat for years to come. You see, this was the first game to feature a grappling system. Instead of just punching or kicking foes, now the player could grab them and throw them around. This has become a staple of every game featuring hand-to-hand -hand combat ever since. From Street Fighter 4 to God of War, Exciting Hour featured great moves, celebrity guest stars, and the biggest damn wrestling ring in the history of the sport. Number 2. Star Wars Arcade This game was released the same year as Return of the Jedi and it left many players scratching their heads as to why a game based on the first film was just being released. Upon playing it, however, all doubts were removed. This game was a representation of Episode 4's epic Death Star battle, and its vector graphics blew everyone away, as did its sound containing John Williams' score and digitized quotes from the movie. They eventually did arcade versions of all three of the original Star Wars films, but none matched the awesomeness that was Star Wars Arcade. Number 1. Dragon's Lair This game was released in the summer of 83 and took the world by storm. Gamers had never before seen such a visually stunning game and were lined up to play. Dragon's Lair chronicled the adventures of a goofy but brave knight named Dirk the Daring as he sought to rescue the lovely Princess Daphne from the clutches of the Dragon Singe. It spawned the Laserdisc revolution of the early 1980s. Laserdisc games, however, only enjoyed a brief popularity due to the extremely linear nature of the games, and after a couple of years, they were forgotten in favor of more traditional pixel-based graphics. There was a brief resurgence of Laserdisc games in the early 1990s, and many of the originals were released on home consoles and PCs. As traditional graphics became more realistic, Laserdisc games were phased out, but their presence is still felt in the form of QuickTime events. As its 30th anniversary approaches, Dragon's Lair has enjoyed a resurgence of popularity and has been made available on various platforms for a new generation of gamers to enjoy. So there you have it folks, my top 10 games of the 80s. Maybe I missed some of your favorites, maybe there were some that you thought should be higher on the list. If so, let me know, write a comment, and let's get a discussion going. Until then, peace out.